So we are back, everybody. Are you all hearing me okay? I'm not sure my mic is on, but I okay, good, because I'm not hearing it here. Uh, Kelly Victory joins me. We are going to be taking your calls off Twitter spaces, so please join us there. Uh, I see many of you there already. So you raise your hand, and we'll just bring you up to the podium and uh, ask your question on any topic. I think Kelly and I need to uh, debrief a little bit on uh, many things that have happened since we last spoke. Uh, some of you say over on Rumble, I think we're seeing that pre-show with me speaking to Megan Kelly from over a year ago. Very interesting. <laughs> it was so weird to see that history now as things continue to unfold. So again, today, uh, tomorrow, and I think Thursday as well. No, wait, today's Tuesday. Yeah, I think we're Remember gonna do... Caleb said not to mention it because it doesn't go on the podcast. But okay. Oh, if no, you it's were fine. watching the video, you would have seen it. No, okay. I know. I understand that. <laughs> I, I understand it doesn't go on the podcast. But we're all a little anyway, disheveled. Three days today. of all questions starting after this. <laughs> Our laws, as it pertains to substances, are draconian and bizarre. The psychopaths start this way. He was an alcoholic. Because of social media and pornography, PTSD, love addiction, fentanyl and heroin, ridiculous <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a doctor for <laughs> sake. Where the hell do you think I learned that? I'm just saying. You go to treatment before you kill people. I am a clinician. I observe things about these chemicals. Let's just deal with what's real. We used to get these calls on Loveline all the time. Educate adolescents and to prevent and to treat. If you have trouble, you can't stop and you want to help stop it. I can help. I got a lot to say. I got a lot more to say. I think everyone knows the next medical crisis could be just around the corner, whether it comes in the form of another pandemic or something much more routine like a tick bite. You and your family need to be prepared. That's where the wellness company comes in. You know the wellness company. We have their physicians on like Dr. McCullough frequently. The wellness company and their doctors are medical professionals you can trust. And their new medical emergency kits are the gold standard when it comes to keeping you safe and healthy. It's really, it's a safety net. It's an insurance policy yeah, absolutely. that you hope you're not going to need, but if you need it, you sure as heck are going to wish you had it if you need it. Be ready for anything. This medical emergency kit contains an assortment of life-saving medications, including ivermectin, z -Pak. The medical emergency kit provides a guidebook to aid in the safe use of all these life-saving medications. From anthrax to tick bites, to COVID-19, the Wellness Company's Medical Emergency Kit is exactly what you need to have on hand to be prepared. Rest assured, knowing that you have emergency antibiotics, antivirals, and antiparasitics on hand to help you and your family stay safe from whatever life throws at you next. Go to drdrew.com slash TWC, that is drdrew.com forward slash TWC to get 10% off today. Just click on that link. And we are back. As I said, we'll be taking calls off Twitter spaces. Uh, I see you guys with your hands up. I will get to you in just a second. But I first want to bring my friend, Dr. Kelly Victory, back up for us to have a little reunion here after we've all been gone for the last week. Kelly, welcome back. <laughs> Hey, good to see you. It was a uh, a nice week off, but I I felt a big sort of there was a hole in my week without having the the show to uh, to to, well, that's to anchor nice, it. Nice so nice glad to, to be back. We were most of that week in the great state of uh, Florida, and it's very interesting how different Florida is than California. Yeah. And people are so happy there. Don't go uh, from Boca to San Jose, <laughs> California, okay? Right. Just so you know. Right. We then went to San Jose yeah. and did an event with RF, RFK Jr. Uh, did you see any of that, Kelly? I did not see it, but I heard about it. I would talk to uh, several people who were there. Uh, it was very mm. well received, as as you know. Uh, Bobby Kennedy is a is a personal friend. In addition to the fact that I'm very supportive of his uh, his candidacy, he and I are unlikely bedfellows. I've known him for a long, long time, and we certainly disagree mm. about a lot of our uh, politics. But um, in addition to being just a, a stunningly good human being. Being, um, I think yes. he has really uh, become incredibly uh, circumspect during this uh, COVID debacle, and it's brought kind of full circle, I think, his feelings about 
the uh, pharmaceutical, you know, the medical and pharmaceutical complex, as it were. Uh, yes. So we, we see more eye to eye now. We certainly see eye to eye on things related to the, the COVID debacle, even though we disagree on many things related, for example, to climate change. Um, I think he'd be a great, I think he'd be a great candidate for a lot of reasons. I think he's the one person in my mind, Drew, who would expose mm. the abject fraud and corruption that, that, goes on in Washington DC. Well, that's that's his big uh that's his big thing. That's what yeah. he enlightened me about uh that overreach of the regulators and the cozy relationship right. with the the pharmaceutical industry and other industries, military mm -hmm. industrial complex whatnot. And um he we need to straighten him out on homelessness a little bit. He bought some narratives yeah. that are going on in California that are yeah. just false uh, and uh we need to straighten yeah. him out a little bit. No, I agree with you on that. And that's what I'm saying. There are th things that um, where we definitely don't agree. Homelessness is one of them. As you said, he, I think he drank the Kool-Aid on some of that. We don't see eye to eye on some things related to education as well. I don't think mm. uh, he appreciates mm -hmm. at least, you know, my viewpoint that the teachers union has got, you know, talk about overreach. Uh, the teachers mm -hmm. union really guided much of what went on during the pandemic with regard to school closures, which were absolutely unnecessary and unjustified. And it really was the teachers union that was calling the shots on that, certainly not the medical science. Um, uh, but all of that said, you're never going to find a candidate with whom you agree 100% or even perhaps, you know, 80%. Um, so right. I'm willing to take some of those things uh, and accept them, given, I think, his commitment to really uh, rat and, you know, routing out and exposing, as I said, the incredible fraud that goes way beyond, by the way, we, I'm not talking about just, you know, the pharmaceutical companies. This goes into, you know, the IRS and the FBI and the CIA, the intelligence agencies, uh, you know, all the things that have been going on in our government uh, where the government has not been looking out for the people. Uh, and certainly, you know, the Ken Kennedys have known um, of that amount of corruption for a long time. And he says he would expose it. And um, so I, I, I think he could be an interesting candidate uh, if the Democrat Party would ever let him have a chance. And he uh, he learns. He's he's open to learning. You, that's why I said we got to straighten yeah. him out on some stuff. Because when, when you actually present him the facts, he will he will go for it. And then when I was up there with the scene Malhotra. Of course, well, we if you and, if he wins, you and Kelly can go be on his uh, his uh, in his. It's what do they call work it? Work with him. Well, at least bid What do you call it? His cabinet. His, his, his cabinet. His cabinet. His various, his kitchen cabinet. You can cabinet, tell how politically minded I am. I, after talking to Ben Carson, what it was like to run a cabinet level <laughs> department, I'm not so sure I want to do that. Kelly, what are the things you, Kelly would be you know, great. What, well, what you just said, Drew, though, is, is very telling about Bobby Kennedy, and I agree. He learns. Unlike every other mm -hmm. candidate, you will commonly hear Bobby Kennedy say, yes, I did say X, Y, or Z 15 years ago, and I've done a yep. 180 on it, or I've, I've really changed how I feel about this. Where yep. the average candidate, and I don't care Democrat or, or Republican, they all say the same thing. I never said that. Or, or no, I've always thought blank as if we don't have the, you know, the receipts mm -hmm. that actually they said something very different 15 or 20 years ago. Bobby Kennedy owns it. He says, yeah, I did think this or that about, um, you know, whatever fuel or foreign affairs or whatever the issue mm -hmm. is. He will learn. He will take, you know, advice from other people. He will assess the the data, and he will commonly change his opinion on something. And I think, you know, my viewpoint, my experience, that is the mark of a really good leader. Not these people, as I said, Democrat or Republican, who dig their heels in and act as if they didn't say something that we have <laughs> clear evidence that they said, yeah. uh, well, or that you know, and they they just don't learn. Recording. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but as I was saying, I, I was up there with Asim Malhotra, and he he has a ninety minute presentation that is airtight. It's it's quite a tour de force. So if you can find that mm -hmm. or figure out a way to watch it online, please oh, do. Oh, you go to um, oh God, reclaiming food and medicine conference dot vhx dot tv v victory hugo xylophone. I'll put it in the restream. Okay. Well, Christy, and Asim is another uh, one. Thanks. Well, thanks. Luck, thanks Christy. Julia. Hey, and one second, one sec, one second. Let's let Kelly finish her thought there. Go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to say, Asim is another one who's who is very 
clear and has no problem changing his mind and acknowledging oh, that. Yeah. You may recall, he was extraordinarily pro-vaccine early on. He got vaccinated. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after he saw what happened to his father and he started getting into the data, he changed his mind on that. And I have great respect for people who are able to take mm -hmm. in new information and come to a different conclusion. So on to, on to he, our he, calls. He is Christine. gone. He is. He has gone. Uh, Asim has gone full Kelly victory. He has gone all yes, the way to the Kelly victory <laughs> camp. <laughs> so, yep. so Christy, before you uh, speak, and he up, also uh, got us an interview on um, Russell Brand. Russell Brand. So, yeah. so Christy, before you speak up, uh, how? Oh, okay, Caleb is good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna do a little quick intro about the the schedule and what we're doing this week. So, in, for those okay. who don't know. My wife and I have some big news. We have a new child. Look at that. that. just arrived on the 25th. Look at that. This is Presley Elizabeth Nation, our adorable, perfect little newborn oh, girl. And awesome. so we're just taking a little bit of an easier week this week so I don't have to prep guests. And we're doing three different caller shows. And the way we're doing it is today, all of the questions are going to be about COVID and medical freedom topics, especially while Dr. Kelly is here. So keep all the questions on those topics. But if you've always been passed over because there's so many medical topics and questions about COVID and medical freedom, tomorrow on November 1st, we're going to be taking topics, calls on any topic except COVID. So it's going to be anything you want to ask, but no COVID calls so you can get those in. And then on November 2nd, we're going to be taking calls again on any topic that can include COVID, anything not COVID plus COVID. And I believe Kelly, I think you might also be there on, uh, on November 2nd, possibly, ah. right? Yeah, I'm there tomorrow. I'm tomorrow. on the, okay. I'm tomorrow, on the yeah. anything but yeah. COVID, your medical, anything but COVID. So I'm here today and yeah. tomorrow. Perfect. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. Presley. And then, uh, Christy, now, now, before you say another word, Christy, tell me how much can we talk about here? Whatever you want. And if uh -oh. we can't, I will, I will say something. I only had three or four okay. things to bring up, but mostly Dr. Victory, okay, I hope you're doing well. Sorry, go ahead. Can can I frame? I, I like to describe who Christy is because I saw her up here and I thought, well, we got to, it's perfect timing for us to talk to her. I don't think, Kelly, you've spoken to her since some of these controversies have come up. Okay. And Christy is a listener. She's a uh, biotech, I want to call her expert. She's worked day in, day out in biotech. She's a true scientist. She's trained in multiple areas, but she's a, a your, your biochemistry really is your primary. Is it not right, Christy? Is that correct? I also have a degree in sociology and finishing in psychology, but I try not to state no, that I knew for that. cancellation purposes. <laughs> I, I, I knew, <laughs> I knew all that. I, I want to focus on your biochemistry part, yeah. though. Yeah, RNA, uh, she, RNA, she, lipid nanoparticle, yeah. and recombinant proteins. Yeah, it's my my okay. shtick. Yep, that was her thing in the in the industry, and so she was an early observer of concerns about DNA plasmids and the. Uh, the uh, regulatory genes that may be in those plasmids gotcha. and uh, promoter genes and whatnot. And uh, so she's been very active on Twitter and has some extremely co um, comprehensive uh, disquisitions on this topic where you can really quickly get up to speed if you read her okay. Twitter threads through and through. So Christy, I'll let you have it. Thanks so much. And Caleb, I saw the new little one. She's adorable. Aww, She's adorable. Thank you. Thank you. We love her. <laughs> I know you're not sleeping right now, but it'll happen. I know <laughs> you know a, that. That's why my camera is not on today. My camera's not on today because I haven't had a minute to plug it back in after taking all the photos of her. So <laughs> later. Aww. Aww. I, I, thanks, Dr. Drew. And I just wanted to say when I came back to Twitter, I didn't know that there were certain scientists and doctors in Germany who had been using my substack that I had deleted prior in court to present mm -hmm. data against their own regulators. And I told them, please ask me to go with you, please, please, because they're going to ask you questions you may not know the answer to because you don't have the, mm -hmm. the biotech. But thanks. Yeah, I've been posting mm -hmm. a lot and I, I just wanted to bring this up for people who weren't aware and I was curious your thoughts too. Uh, of the DNA plasmid contamination and what that means because a lot of people are pushing back saying, hey, we were within the regulatory limits and we've done this in the past with other vaccines, but this is inside right. what's called a lipid nanoparticle. It's called a transfection agent, which allows it mm -hmm. to get into the cell, but also, you know, as a, uh, Dr. Buckholtz and uh, Kevin McCurden 
you know, we, we've been trying to stress that you don't need, you know, there's this talk about this nuclear localization signal, which means it, it it's like a, uh, the directions to get it into the nucleus where the DNA is, where that's the, the thought where you're going to have mutations or integration into the genome. So I, I just wanted to make it clear to people that tests have been done all the time previously. You don't need that to get it into the nucleus. It will, it will get in seven to ten percent of the time, no matter what. How? So that, that's what's a current concern. What's, what's the mechanism? What is the mechanism? Out of curiosity. So you've got a couple. You have telophase uh, for basic biology cell division telophase. Mm. It's uh, mm -hmm. transient. So when the, for those unaware, like cells will divide and replicate, and as that's happening, the cell kind of elongates. The nucleus opens up. And then it just allows mm. it to, to go inside and you don't need it, that directions. You don't need the, you don't need like the, the directions for it to go the in there or to pull it in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The transporter, you don't need it. But, but to be clear, Kelly? Christy, let me just interject here for, for folks who are listening. There is nothing about this DNA plasmid contamination that is, uh, for lack of a better word, that is kosher, that is okay. Um, these, to be very clear, the pharmaceutical companies used an entirely different process to create these vaccines yes. than the process they submitted when they requested authorization under the emergency mm -hmm. use. So any way you cut it, I don't care what you change, when you submit yeah to get authorization, if you vary one iota from that in your process going forward, you have breached the regulatory process. They did something that was so egregious, they used an entirely different process. These, this DNA yeah. wasn't even part of the process that they submitted to the FDA. This is a bait and switch of the worst type. So even if this DNA were 100% harmless, which it's not, Correct. hardly, uh, if it posed no threat, which it, it, it clearly does, even if it were a harmless change, this is an egregious breach of the regulatory process, and that by itself should cause the FDA to remove them from the market. Across the board, Dr. Victory, not just that, but the lipid nanoparticles, what's called zeta potential. I found a study that was buried that states that the positively charged lipids can do what's called covalently bond, if you, mm -hmm. for those of us mm -hmm. who know the mm -hmm. science, to any nucleic acid they come in contact with, which would cause mm -hmm. a point mutation, aggregation. You have just a number of things that could happen. And for those um, not familiar with science, the positively charged lipids, they are inside the lipid nanoparticle. A uh, study out of 2021, Packer et al. found that it, is bonding and mutating the RNA inside the lipid nanoparticle. And they used very special techniques called mm -hmm. reverse ion pair uh, HPLC, which, you know, over everybody's head, but it's very special techniques. So it's not a hypothesis. They were able to see it on multiple imaging. So mm -hmm. now the worry is on top of the DNA and the, the possible mutation yeah. there and cancers, uh, this would also if it's hitching a ride with the DNA into the nucleus can mutate as well. Mm -hmm. So that's an mm -hmm. additional concern, and, but. But. Oh, so here's another thing. So you, we know Speecher et al released the, the study data that they found out of Canada, Dr. Speecher, who looked mm -hmm. at the plasma DNA contamination and they compared mm -hmm. it to batches that are known as hot batches for like, where's my, mm -hmm. how bad is my batch? Right. And they found that the higher levels of DNA contamination are also correlated to saw that. batches right. that have, bad batch. so I actually yeah. went into the batch yeah. data info, like which anybody can. And when I looked in there, myocarditis was number one. Yeah, it certainly and does appear, Christy, that the that the more highly contaminated uh, batches were the ones that were the the hot batches, and that you know we've known from the beginning uh, that the adverse events were not uh, homogeneously distributed across all batches. They clearly were associated with a relatively small number of batches, and it does appear that it's the ones that are most highly contaminated with this uh, plasma DNA. Yeah, and, and the I other wanted to thing say something because there are studies I, coming. Sorry, go ahead, Dr. Drew. So, because another study is on was just deck, I don't know if I can well, mention it. Well, of course, but but let me just say quickly that that there was another. I forget where I saw this presentation, but 
um, you know, these DNA plasmids are highly um, routinized. In other words, you know, scientists have these. You can you can download the exact genetic makeup mm -hmm. of these plasmids uh, off Google. I mean, they're just they're highly regularly used in industry. And strangely, what I heard was, this is what I'm led to believe, that the only region that was left off of the identification of the genes around the plasmid in some sort, in one of the publications that was used for the regulatory process, exclude the promoter gene. Exclude the one gene yes. that we worry about that can cause cancer. Right. Can you speak to that, well, Christine? Well, there's, yeah, so there was, there's actually two promoters, and it seemed like it was redundant, so... Uh, Kevin McKernan, he has a sub stack as well where he details this out and he uh, has a lot of science in there. It's pretty, it's pretty intense stuff, but Heady. it didn't yeah. include Pfizer, Pfizer. So it's Pfizer specifically. You have what's called a plasmid map. And these are things we worked with all day. Um, some people have talked about, well, it's just this generic thing they download. When you do a custom project, you design it. So when you make an antibody, you need this. You, you design it. You specify what goes in there and what doesn't. But there was this yeah, promoter called the SV40 promoter, right? And Pfizer did not include it in their blueprint as part of the data set that they sent for approval Very odd. for the clinical trials, Very like odd. what Dr. Victory said. And there's just no way that right. No one didn't see that when because it's it's hitting a bunch of eyes. It, it's not just one person, right? Well, but they're or, worried that yeah, uh, you know it, that can cause never. Sorry. What is it? Never, never, uh, never accuse malfeasance. Never attribute malice. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, say it. What's what the Dr. phrase? Buckholz said. Hand yeah. lens razor. Hand lens razor. Never attribute uh, incompetence where there could be malice, or if it's the right. other way around. It's the other way yeah, around. Never, I think never it's yeah, yeah, malice yeah, never attribute malice, malice, malice when, it, when it could yeah. just incompetence. Um, although I have to say, I that. if it's hard to imagine, I'm not sure which one is worse in this case. Uh, it's probably a combination of of both. I have a hard time attributing this to simply. Uh, incompetence. This is something that is so glaring. They clearly knew that there was a change here. They clearly knew this was involved. And I think in an effort to get uh, get these shots into every arm, they simply uh, they simply fast tracked it. I, I, and I, Kelly, you know, and, and as, as you know, I I don't fault them for that. I, what I fault them for is not after we got things under control, looking back and going, okay, now let's do our job. You know, that's what I fault them for. And that the continued push in the face of all the shortcuts, that's where I'm having a problem. Testing is coming. Yeah, I, guess so I just wanted to jump in. Sorry, go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Christy. Thanks, Dr. Victory. And, and really, I hope you're doing well with everything you're battling. Like you have been in my thoughts, Dr. Victory. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm feeling great. It's good. Uh, so with regards to genomic integration, where it would integrate into the host genome, so that, that's been the concern that multiple scientists have raised. You know, it could be in a daughter cell or uh, a cell where it only lives as long as, say, a fly would survive versus a stem cell or something that's with you forever. There's testing that's going to be coming up. I will tag you. I will let you know, Dr. Drew, where um, those mm -hmm. who have had significant vaccine injuries, I'm not talking about headache, I'm talking about pulmonary embolism, uh, multiple sclerosis, lymphoma, or whatever it is, uh, there, there is testing coming. And once that, that is made available, I'll, I'll tag you. I'm just not going to say further for the safety of those involved. But it would involve testing tissue, and you would just need... I want to say you would just need uh, preferably a biopsy of the area that was impacted, but uh, other biopsies mm. may may be able to be used, such as like a colposcopy, or if you just went in for something routine or not routine, you know, I'm 48, so I got told I need the endoscopies again and colonoscopy for cancer checks, mm -hmm. but just simple tissues like that. Also, I don't want anyone to rip out their kid's teeth. I'm not saying this, but as you know, stem cells exist in the teeth of children, even though it probably didn't make its way there, but there are multiple ways tissues can be tested and just know that that's coming and it's going to come fast. And M Kevin McKernan has already addressed that he's making the kit for this, but other people are going to be involved. So it's coming fast within the next 30 days and, it, and it's going to roll quickly and I'll tag you because like you've said, we need tests, we need answers. 
right. in order to see mm-hmm. if this is happening. So doctors can help. And then also because, you know, Health Canada, their regulatory agency said, oh, this is fine. Uh, I, Dr. or Senator Rennick, who is like huge in Australia, just, you know, asked his regulatory agency and the other politicians, hey, what are you going to do about this? And they literally said, well, because it came in to Australia, it's really not something we test. And then they kicked the can twice to their to like separate agencies not wanting to take accountability, responsibility, or to do the checks. It was just horrifying to watch. So hopefully this do, test do, is, do is going to be the you, final blow to kick Christine, it in. Do, do either of you think, well, is there, I, I'm always trying to assess my own assessment uh, abilities. And I just keep, it's so extraordinary what you're describing. I keep wondering, am I missing something? Is there something we're missing? Do you have any, any sense that, that there's an area, a blind spot in our own thinking about this when you raise these issues and are concerned about them? Things were done rapid fast in 2020, sure. right? Because in, in the beginning, yeah. look, we know, we can say people died of COVID. Yeah. That mm-hmm. people were on dialysis, that they were having clots in their kidneys, like that they were they they were running out of dialysis machines for people. Not it wasn't just you know the respirators; it was dialysis machines. That in the beginning there there was a stronger need for I guess panic, but they they didn't go about things the right way. They they listed the lipid nanoparticle as an excipient with the FDA, so they didn't have to test it. And now like well, that's coming out that there's things that are bad. Yeah, it goes way beyond that, though, to me, because there was a complete failure to apply the thoughtful risk benefit calculation. The reality is, yes, some some people were dying of COVID, but those some people were over the age of 70 in almost all cases, there were people with a set of well-known comorbidities, and we refused to use, we were not allowed to use the entire cocktail of medications that were we could have used to treat those people, and the vast majority of them would have done well. We knew from the very beginning that children, uh, and frankly, healthy young people under the age of about 50, were at such a de minimis risk from bad outcome from COVID as to be approaching zero. So there was no justification to panic and try to shove an untested vaccine into the arm of a healthy person, not just under the age of 20, but under the age, say, of 40 or 50. Healthy people didn't need this, and they sure as hell didn't need it, foisted upon them without their, you know, not only consent or, or their their will. This was a, a breach of the Nuremberg Code. These were, these are, as of today, as I sit here on the 31st of October, there isn't a single FDA approved vaccine, quote unquote, for COVID available in the United States. By definition, they remain experimental. So I am not willing to give people a pass that this was fog of war. Oh my God, we need to get these things out before we can actually test them and inject everybody when 90% of the everybody's weren't at risk from COVID. Dr. Victor, I just I'm wanted to say take- I'm teetering on the edge. I don't know if it was okay to, okay to say this. I'm teetering on the edge that you are to 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 say intent and malfeasance, but for me yeah. to wrap my brain around that, I have to believe in an evil that I can't even comprehend. So that's what I'm rep- that's what I'm wrapping my head around with. Is I, I'm probably going to get there. I just haven't been able <laughs> to deal with that thought that that pure evil would exist like that. Yeah, Thanks again. I, I, Thank you. No, no, I, I, I agree. And I appreciate all the hard science you're actually doing because we, we need the science to back up everything that uh, we are thinking and, and wondering about. So thank you for, uh, yeah, for look, being at the bench. Check, check out her, um, check out her threads. It's hard at heart of grace. And uh, she's got really, if you really want to learn about this stuff, she lays it all out in a way that people can digest it. Uh, Christy, thanks so much. Thanks. Thanks, Dr. Drew. Thanks, Caleb and Dr. Victory. You got it. Thanks. You bet. Hope we'll talk soon. So uh, we have to take a little break here, Kelly. Uh, When we get back, I I want to assail this risk-reward issue because that's where my... You know, that's where you and I have absolute agreement. And and I want to right. kind of tease it apart a bit. And, uh, you know, and 
I don't know if we're going to end up sort of uh, figuring out where we agree and where we disagree, but but I, I just want to get a good look uh, for our listeners and viewers of what is going on that gets us keeps us asking questions and keeps us so concerned about this. And it's really what's happening to young people. It is the bioethics of taking a healthy person and making them sick. And if you're doing that, you better have a damn good reason for it because there's almost no bioethical indication for it ever, uh, right. number one. And then number two, uh, the, the mandates and what that has been about and why this country is continuing to push so hard on something that is hard to understand. So we'll take a little break and be right back. Susan and I have been looking for a nutrition-packed, great-tasting greens drink for a while. And then we tried our friends at Paleo Valley's Organic Super Greens, which is superior to what's out there on the market. Our friends at Paleo Valley, well, they think of everything, and they've created what's been called a magical green powerhouse. All three delicious varieties, pure, unflavored, strawberry lemonade, and tropical, contain 23 certified organic, antioxidant-rich superfoods, including the highest quality spirulina. It's also free of cereal grasses, gluten, grains, soy, and dairy, and no added sugars or artificial sweeteners. And what's more, it delivers digestive enzymes, polyphenols, which are believed to burn fat, and eight essential amino acids. Imagine the time, effort, and cost of trying to make this yourself. It's impossible. Head on over to drdrew.com slash paleovalley, and you will get 15% off your first order. All the great products they have there, 15% off at drdrew.com slash paleo, P-A-L-E-O. Fall is right around the corner, which means dry, flaky red skin from allergy season is coming with it. But the best way to take care of your skin is with our skincare secret, Genucel. You don't need to worry about that puffy, tired eye look or those annoying dark spots or even dry, flaky skin because Genucel skincare has you covered. Susan and I love our Genucel products so much, we want you to try our personally curated skincare bundles. It's risk-free at genucel.com slash Drew. Genucel works so well, you can see the results in this unplanned live moment on our show when the Redness Repair Cream repaired my skin in just minutes right before your eyes. Their concentrated vitamin C serum helps keep your skin plump and hydrated. Plus, with their immediate effects, you can see astonishing results in under 12 hours. Quick, effective, and easy. Go to genucel.com slash Drew right now to try our bundles and save over 60% today. And remember to enroll in Genucel's world-class concierge program for additional savings and free shipping. Don't wait. It's genucel.com slash Drew, G-E-N-U-C-E-L dot com slash D-R-E-W. These products have transformed my life and Susan's and saved her marriage. Discover the key to oral hygiene, regardless of your current daily dental routine. Whether you diligently brush and floss multiple times a day, or you struggle, you got bleeding gums, bad breath, plaque buildup, this revelation is for both of you. Surprisingly, over 350,000 Americans experience health issues that may be connected to their toothbrush or even caused by it, ranging from heart or blood sugar problems, forgetfulness, digestive difficulties, immune issues, all related to oral hygiene. Scientific studies have shown that a simple switch of your toothbrush can lead to a healthier teeth and potentially save your marriage. Yes. Save your marriage. Our study. We did a personal study. My wife, Susan, hates the sound of the sonic toothbrushes. But introducing the real white sonic toothbrush, of course, also their hydroxyapatite dirty mouth mineral toothpaste by Primal Life Organics, these products have transformed my life and Susan's and saved her marriage. It's much quieter. It's a very powerful toothbrush, but it is quiet and it saved our marriage. So... The real white sonic toothbrush from Primal Life Organics stands out among all other electric toothbrushes I've tried. It effectively eliminates plaque, harmful bacteria, promotes gum health. Get yours and enjoy 60% off at naturaltoothbrush.com slash DREW. Some platforms have banned the discussion of controversial topics. If this episode ends here, the rest of the show is available at drdrew.tv. There's nothing in medicine that doesn't boil down to a risk-benefit calculation. It is the mandate of public health to consider the impact of any particular mitigation scheme on the entire population. This is uncharted territory, Drew. 
just a little promo for Kelly Victory that is uh, <laughs> that is programmed into our whole structure here. So we uh, throw yeah. that up there. So really quickly, I know we want to get some more calls, and we do have some great callers uh, on hold here. But I, 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 the myocarditis issue is really now for me become the Rubicon of sorts, in the sense that we now know that there is an incidence of myocarditis in young males. It is in the package insert on Pfizer. I have seen a ton of it, uh, mostly in the setting of post myocarditis arrhythmias in young males. Um, and w let me just ask this: so we start with a place of sort of agreement. What would you, uh, what would based on the data that's out there now, what would you say is the incidence of myocarditis? From the vaccine oh boy well well here's the issue it's a hard question to answer drew because the only ones we know about are those that are symptomatic um you know those people right. who have chest pain or shortness of breath or develop exercise intolerance or those sorts of things yeah, that arrhythmias. cause us to yeah. do right the, the, you know god forbid an arrhythmia yeah. or a sudden cardiac arrest something along a symptomatic something for many people, unfortunately, there is no symptom and we don't know. They have developed scar. They have inflammation. They will develop scarring well, somebody, that is permanent somebody and we just don't sent know. Me a, yeah, somebody just sent me an article. I'm going to read it when I have time to sit and watch it, read it carefully, that uh, everybody studied with MRI after vaccine has some evidence of myocardial inflammation. That's an extraordinary exactly. claim. But let, let's come up with well, a number. What number would you so, say? So, just get, you know, just so, sort of for the and let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Even let's give them the benefit of the doubt and come up with a number. Let, let's say that twenty five percent of people who got these shots okay. end up with some element okay. of you know. And again, I'm I'm, I'm so, spitballing because we don't yeah. know. And let me take okay. a little. Let me so, just take a little. Di go ahead. I was going to say because I was going to take a little bit you, different. Go ahead, uh, well, what I was going to say is this: it, rather than just looking at the incidence of adverse events. If you look at how this program, this vaccine program was organized, hopefully everybody knows by now and all the vaccine manufacturers acknowledge and the CDC acknowledge that the vaccines don't stop people from contracting COVID, okay? I think we can all agree on that, right? Mm -hmm. They don't stop you from mm -hmm. getting COVID. We now know- Or spreading. That they, that's where I was gonna go. We now know and they acknowledge they, they never even tested it to see if it would stop transmission. Okay, we know that it doesn't. We now know that it doesn't stop me from spreading it to you. If I'm vaccinated, are you from spreading it to me? So the vaccines, we can agree on two things. Turns out they don't stop you from getting COVID. And we, turns out they don't stop you from transmitting COVID to others. And they never even tested that part. Okay, that was never even tested. Once you know that it doesn't stop transmission, there is zero, not an iota of rationale for requiring you against your will, no matter who you are, to mm -hmm. get the vaccine, okay? Because the yep. only argument yep. you could make, as flimsy as it is, that I can mandate that you take the vaccine or that you don't enter this bar or restaurant or that you don't fly on a plane or you don't travel if you're not vaccinated, is if I had solid proof that I can require this because it's in the public interest for me to keep you from transmitting your COVID to somebody else. Once you know that that's not a case, there is absolutely no justification. There's one. So all of the there, there's so, one you could throw what? in. You you could throw in. I'm, I'm protecting the healthcare system. That we're going to be overrun. The ICUs will be overrun. This kind of stuff. That's obviously not true, but that's what was Correct. used. You got to remember that stuff was used, so that was there. But but the so the you know the idea. But this is a critical, really you know fundamental thing that people need to understand. You cannot force mm -hmm. somebody to do something for their own benefit mm -hmm. any more than I could say you. I'm going to mandate that you go to the gym. I'm going to mandate that you eat a you know a low fat diet. I'm going to mandate that you mm -hmm. stop smoking. I'm going to mandate anything else because people have a sovereign right to make a decision about what they do with their own bodies. And once we have mm -hmm. breached that, God help us, we now have a world in which I do not want to live. And what would, let's take a 30 year old male. What would you say his, we'll take a male, his risk of dying of COVID is? Just out of how many cases of COVID will we see a death in a 30 year old well, male? We know almost zero. P people under the age okay. of 30 
had, had, we had a 99.98% chance of surviving. Yeah. So a 0.0.02% chance of dying. So the, yeah. the risk so, is about as close to zero as you could get. So, so this is where I am exercised these days. I'm going to give the give the I'm going to use the absolutely most um, liberal numbers possible and say the the incidence of myocarditis is one per five thousand, and I'm going to say the incidence of death of COVID in a thirty year old is one per hundred thousand. Uh, now and then, so let's what five thousand. Okay. That's what twenty times. Twenty times. Uh, we've got twenty people. 20 times, 20 kids getting, healthy kids getting 30-year-olds or 25-year-olds getting myocarditis right. to maybe save one, maybe. And now we right. know for sure half of those at a year still have evidence of significant myocardial injury, which is ca catastrophic in my mind. So that means we are going to sacrifice 10 healthy for every one possible and that one is right. maybe more like one per 500,000 uh and yet Correct. here we are and you're saying and you're saying it's more like one per 500,000 it's more like one one per 10 or one per four are getting myocarditis yeah. of which half now have right. persistent problems so this is this is where the rubber hits the road this is where exactly. there are profound profound concerns right there yeah, you know, I all my elderly patients, as you know, are all boosted up and uh, have and have I think had reduced their risk of hospitalization. We can disagree on whether that's true or not, and uh, and um, you know, but that's very different than requiring it for college students to go to school. It's a very it, different thing. Exactly. Right. It's, exactly. So so yeah. the, right. So the numbers, even if we use your very liberal numbers, you you're yeah. It, the calculation doesn't come anywhere near. I, I mean, it is absolutely an egregious affront to people's health. health uh, what, what we did, and you're talking about people, not just not that the lives of the elderly are not important. Don't don't misinterpret what I'm saying. But you're talking about young, healthy people, our military, our healthcare workers are you know law enforcement people these are the people who are mandated who are forced they were young healthy people whose risk from this virus was zero or darn near it and we harmed them they they, they were harmed and, and okay yes you took and people the, the you thing took the that healthiest is never... and the most productive amongst yeah. us and and, mm -hmm. and and destroyed their lives and the thing that is never discussed is years of life lost, years right. of life lost. We were very focused on saving lives of people in nursing homes. Mm -hmm. The data is clear, uh, and not that we shouldn't be very concerned about that, but understand that the average life expectancy for a male admitted to a nursing facility chronically is six months. We are right. talking about 30-year-olds with 50 years of yep. life lost laura yep. go right ahead i'm sorry we're dr victor and i are going on here please go ahead hi this is laura powell and um i just thought i'd offer an update on ab 2098 i don't know if you've talked about it lately we have not uh, AB thank you so much no. and to refresh everybody's memory uh ab 2098 was a california law that uh it's the medical censorship law that could take away a doctor's license for misinformation, disinformation on COVID. Um, so that was passed last year and took effect in January. Lawsuits were filed. Um, I'm co-counsel in a lawsuit with the New Civil Liberties Alliance, and we successfully obtained a preliminary injunction in January. Uh, one of the other lawsuits was not successful, and it was on appeal and that uh, is still mm. pending in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. Um, they had or argument in July. It went um, did not go well for the state. I think anybody listening would agree with that. So it, it looked as if they were likely to lose that appeal. Um, we still had our preliminary injunction in place this whole time. And then right at the end of the um, legislative session, a bill was amended to repeal AB 2098, and it happened so last minute, there was no discussion, no explanation. Um, so that was passed. Uh, the governor signed it. So AB 2098, as of January 1st, will no longer be good law. Um, hmm. However, 
it, it isn't clear that that means the state is giving up on its desire to censor doctors and to use the medical board to threaten doctors uh, by, ta- you know, threaten to take away their medical licenses if they say things they don't agree with. There was a um, case mm. that's pending against one doctor that was filed not under AB 2098, under the pre-existing negligence law. Um, mm. uh, threatening, it's still pending here. Let's see, what were the things she said? This was considered gross negligence that she told a patient, the masks do not stop viruses, that COVID-19 are not true vaccines, they are gene therapy, that vaccines are produced with aborted fetal cells and encouraging the use of ivermectin. Um, These were the statements that that the medical board is alleging or gross negligence. So this is not under AB 2098. So, you know, going forward, I don't right. know what this will look like and if they will continue to find other means. I mean, they clearly saw this law didn't work for them. It was unconstitutional and they were going to lose. So they're trying different tactics to continue the censorship of doctors. Well, yeah, as you pointed out, uh, Laura, unfortunately, you know, um, I had multiple complaints against my medical licenses in states other than California that don't have, uh, you know, a a crummy law or didn't have a law like 2098, uh, but they are absolutely able to use the, um, the, you know, medical board as a cudgel uh, to try to, you know, keep people under control and the Federation of State Medical Boards, which is a totally unaccountable, unelected, and largely anonymous group um, hiding out in Texas, uh, you know, uses, again, wields its power uh, inexplicably to control what doctors say. So I was thrilled to hear that 2098 was likely going to go away in California, but don't think for a minute that they don't have other ways to try to uh, censor and control people. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and so, you know, it's a question of how do you challenge this in court? We, we had a law we could challenge. Now, you know, you have right. to go on an individual case by case basis after they take these actions. And of course, it's very difficult for doctors, right, to, to fund these lawsuits to fight the medical board. Um, my mm-hmm. understanding their malpractice insurance won't cover those um, right. fighting the medical board. Mm-hmm. Um, so, mm-hmm. you know, and, and how many doctors are willing to take that risk? Their entire livelihood, you know, the years and all the money they've put yeah. into this career yeah. to lose everything. Uh, so we'll see what it looks like going forward. But I mean, the saga of AB 2098 went away. And as you said, that did start with the Federation of State Medical Boards, right? right? That They were the ones mm-hmm. who called for that law and right. California was a test case. So on the bright side, mm. I mean, it failed. So, so I think yep. we're less likely to see it happen in the other States. Um, and you know, that's where we are. We had, we had a victory, but it, it would be so much better. I mean, it's likely the cases haven't been dismissed, but they're seeking to have them dismissed now as moot because the law mm. will no longer exist as of January 1st, but that leaves us without this very definitive statement from Right. A judge. I mean, we have the preliminary thing, but you know, definitive statement on the free speech rights of mm. doctors. Um, there is an interesting case that's pending in the Supreme Court. Uh, we're waiting to see if they'll grant uh, certiorari on a case that does have to do with um, free speech rights of doctors. That uh, should be. I'm hoping they'll grant. It should be interesting. Laura, thank you so much for the fight and for the update. And uh, we got to get you in here for another formal interview one of these days soon. So appreciate it so very much. Thank you. Laura Powell, everyone. And uh, at Laura Powell Esquire, uh, I think we, Caleb, don't we have her uh, website or something handy somewhere? You might want to look that up. Uh, We're going to keep going through calls here. We got a lot of people requesting. Uh, Kelly, any comment before I go on to the next call? No, no, I just, I, I think, um, as I said, I'm, I'm thrilled that 2098 has gone away, but don't think for a minute that, uh, that they need that in place in order to censor and, you know, really, uh, persecute yeah. physicians. Yeah. I think I, you remember I, I spoke, I spoke to the, um, 
the the chairman of the the board. I what is her position? Uh, I forget what they call it, but she's a, the lead uh, position at the California Board of Medical Quality Assurance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She was lovely. She's an attorney. A father was her her father was a urologist. She's very she very her head's in the right place in terms of mm -hmm. she was really concerned about very outlying behavior. And she said to me something chilling, which was that, you know, I was asking her about, I was worried about AB 2098. And she said, you know, we already have that uh, authority anyway. We don't really don't need right. AB 2098. So right. that exactly. that is really, I think, why they abandon things. So there you go. Yep. Uh, this yep. is just uh, data, just data, just data. It's a clever twist, a D-A-Y-D-A, -A, but data is what just data is interested in. So it should be interesting to see what we get. Uh, just data, un un there you are. Go right ahead. Unmute yourself and uh, have, oh. have at us. Well, thank you, Dr. Drew. And thanks for hosting the call, especially on All Hallows Eve. I uh, did want to uh, mm. ask quickly, I posted a video inside looking at ICD caused deaths in age groups from 85 all the way down to zero to 17. We can see mm -hmm. the different COVID waves as they came through. We can see the Delta wave. But we can also notice specifically respiratory deaths were elevated in every age group compared to normal deaths. But there is no change in cancer deaths. I'd love to hear the comments of the panel. So, so hold on. So no change yeah, in cancer I, deaths um, month to month since, since COVID outbreak? That's correct. Going back to 2018 and going forward, we've seen the continued decrease in yeah, cancer that's, deaths that we've noted. Yeah. And that's, of course, a treatment, right? Because we have effective treatments for cancer, and most cancers become chronic illnesses these days. I, I, I have taken the position, Kelly, just I don't know what your position is. I know people keep writing about and talking about so-called turbo cancers. I don't know what that means. I, I'm taking all the cancer stuff, for me, just off the table. I just don't, I don't know what to do with it. I don't know if there's anything there. Data's telling us it's not. What do you say? I, I think that it's irrefutable that we've seen an increase in in incidence of cancers i think it's off the charts um you know you can't what, death what is charts, a, is, doctor it, i i'd be happy to show you the charts of people you know who are do are the oncologists i'd be happy to show you cancer deaths so you know please is a, please, is a, please do uh, so we we've reviewed the american I, cancer society charts and the cdc charts there is no rise so so maybe maybe I we bring I those up tomorrow. I disagree tomorrow. with you. I think I think there. Yeah, Kelly? I think there. I think there. Sh yes, there's there's a huge rise. Cancer deaths is a silly thing to be following. Uh, it, the cancer. It, fortunately, it takes people a while to die from cancer. Um, they, they, you know that's. So you're that's saying cancer reality. incidents. It, cancer. Correct. Cancer, cancer incidents is up. Not cancer is death up. is up. Exactly. So if you talk to people who do this for a living um, and, and who actually see and can tell you what they're seeing in their uh, practices, you hear not only about the increase in rates of cancers, but in the types of cancers that were previously unheard of in certain groups, for example, advanced colon cancers in people in their second and third decades, people with aggressive lymphomas and leukemia leukemias in their early and late teens um, at times. And, and those have know, been increasing advanced, since 2014, correct, doctor? Advanced, those have been increasing since 2014. But not at the same trajectory as they are now since 2021. That's correct. They're, at a, lower, half of, they're at a lower trajectory now. I, I they're would, at a lower I would, trajectory now. I, I'm not going to argue with you when neither of us are looking at data. It's We can both I'm say- I'm looking at the data yes, from is, UCSF. No, okay. I'm not looking at it. I'm looking at and the just screen. a quick where where, where is that published? Data data. It, right. Yeah. Just so like we can all look it up and see what you're looking at. Go go yeah. to UCSF or the American Cancer Society. Yeah. And I'll post down below. UCSF, go ahead. It's up to date through twenty twenty one. We publish mortality. Oh, that's... Because in specific, you are looking at mortality due to cancer with the claim of turbo cancers. That does not exist. I, I, I disagree with so, you. And the bottom line is we need so to know Drew, like that's... everything what we need to know, like everything yep. else, is which data you're looking at, who's funding yep. the collection of that data, um, who's publishing it, the, who's the... funding it, because I'll tell you right now, it if you've learned nothing else through this, 
It is entirely who is funding and supporting the collection of the data. There are a lot of people who have a vested interest. I would tell you, and, and I say this all the time, what exactly is my motivation to fudge or manipulate the data? What is my motivation? I can tell you what the motivation of people at universities is. I can tell you what UCSF's motivation is. Look at their funding it? page. What is it? it look okay. at their funding page. Right. Look who funds their labs, Drew. I'll tell you who funds They're funded Kelly by the Drew. Cancer Society of America and, and, and cancer and, compounds. And who, they have every who, reason to want to see cancers going up, not down. They they have every, They are funded by the pharmaceutical agencies who don't want to throw shade on or expose the results of the of the vaccines. So I Kelly, so, but the results of the vaccines. We've been vaccinating since 2021. We saw no rise in cancer. Yeah. In 2020, but we saw an acute right. so, rise so, so that's, in cardiovascular in young age groups yeah. in 2020. Yeah, well before vaccines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure, COVID does it. But the question is, is vaccine also doing it? But but listen. Yes. So really, we're not going to know. I'm looking at this data. We're, we're really not going to know the, the how to how to parse these two opinions out. I think you'll agree, caller. What's your name, caller? Do you mind telling me? Data. Just call you data. Uh, just data. Data. So data, I, I don't think really that. we need up through we need up through 2023 to really understand what's going on. And and I, I would I, I'm not making anything of Kelly's making a lot of this. I'm making nothing of it. You're making nothing of it. But I wouldn't you agree it'd be nice to have two more years of data two more years of data before we completely um put this argument to rest. Okay. We all agree. And we, we have agree those on that, two years everybody? of data with mortality. Can we agree we have two years of data for mortality showing no change? Yeah, I want to see incidence no, data I, since I, that's I, what's I, at, yeah, at issue. I, yeah, yeah. I, we need to sit down and have a a legitimate discussion. Which if means I would I argue, though, Kelly, I, I on his behalf, I would argue that if really there was a marked increase in stage four cancers, that it should impact uh, mortality data too, right? Because that's and, and I, for, yes, stage four cancers I, but, don't. But I think that know, we are starting stage to four see cancer that mortality past, at one year. We're, we're we starting to it. see that. We're starting to see yes, that now. If you in, in the past in, six in months, what, and if you please, if you doctor, talk in what resource are you quoting that you're seeing uh, a change in mortality at six months? I can show you. I can show you lots of data from let's, lots of different uh, please, physicians. Please do so. I, I look forward to discussing yeah, it tomorrow. Let's bring but, that uh, out. Post look, it. Okay. Well, first of all, let all me right, say, we'll let me share one out. thing. First of all, yeah, I don't. I don't argue with anonymous people. So. I, I am Dr. Kelly Victory. Um, I can give you my my credentials where I trained. You know who I am. I can bring on somebody like Dr. William Mackis, also willing to use his name and his credentials. So you're just galloping argue, towards name instead of discussing the CDC data. I, 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 don't, I don't understand argue, why you don't want to reside no, on the what data. What I'm saying is I do not argue with people. As far as I know, you work for Pfizer. <laughs> okay. Why would I work for All Pfizer? All right, so I'm going to... Uh, Okay. Oh, as far as well, I we're know, we're supposed you to do no COVID advisor. calls tomorrow. <laughs> so, but Cal uh, Caleb's throwing a, a sign up to me saying no COVID calls tomorrow. Well, we could at least review this data if we want to. But listen, yeah, we're, right. you guys, we're not going to solve this unless we, you know, prepare to to have have the argument and discussion. We're, about we're it. definitely so, not. But thank I you for your call. Just take I appreciate. A moment to say thank. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. No. I'm sorry. Uh, let me. Uh, did I get rid of him? Can you bring him back? Uh, wait. He. Uh... <sighs> If he's still there, I'll try and bring him up. Uh, but if he's still listening, uh, please email the stuff you're talking about to contact at drdrew.com, and I'll try to get this to uh, Dr. I, Drew and Dr. Kelly directly. I, I've got it in front of me. I've got it here. He, 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 I mean, it's very, very easily accessible. The question is, is it adulterated, right. and is it, and right. why is there a difference in right. what Kelly's saying? And, right. and you know, we, this all needs to be, to me, kind of worked through. That's why I'm staying out of the right. cancer conversation because it seems yeah. too complicated for me. It's it cancer is a sporadically occurring illness. It's to try to to try to give it a infectious, you know, sort of um inciting influence. It it it, it, it should show up. It should show up it's if not, there's an inciting we, but inciting inciting I'm like an infectious disease. You know, you get a, an agent and it causes it. You should see that. You should see that data show up in the next couple of years, seems to me. Yeah. And yes, yeah, so and I think we're starting I mean I think we are seeing it if you talk to individual car, uh oncologists and and you know mm. 
people might know, for example, you know, I have the opportunity to speak to oncologists regular, quite regularly. Um, and so I know what there's, you know, what individual oncologists are seeing. And then we have people yeah. like, you know, the folks who are good friends of this show, which includes people like Pierre Corey and Ryan Cole and uh, Peter McCullough and William Mackis and others, um, all of whom, you know, have no, have no reason to, um, to try to, you know, fudge the but, data. But to or be fair, I, it, it, true, but they could be wrong. I mean, that's the point. We got to, we got to, we can't make the mistake that the other side make and get too hubristic about our, that's, that's why one call, call to all of us. Just, let's just, let's just be open. Let's be open. I, I think, I think when the day is done, it's going to be a lot of mixed stuff. Like that's why I'm so focused on the myocarditis. It's super clear there's something going on there. And once yeah. something else clears up and I'm going to hang my hat on that. Uh, Art, you can uh, unmute your mic there. Art. Oh, he's, he's not used to unmuting. It's in the lower left-hand corner there. The cartoon just went up showing you how to do it. Um, and if you don't, uh, if you're not able to uh, get up there. Oh, I'm going to bring just data up uh, to finish his comment if he wishes while we're trying to get uh, Art in here. Hi, do you want to, uh, Data, do you want to just finish that last comment you were making? You were saying thank you for something. Absolutely. I was saying thank you for the discussion. Thanks for listening to both sides. And thank you for being open-minded as we continue to look at both cancer data as well as cardiovascular yeah. data, which I also included in the issue. Yeah. We saw the sharp rise in 2020, yeah. but not in 2021. I'd yeah. like to say thank you again yeah. for the opportunity to speak and have a good day. Yep, you got it. Thank you. Okay, are you there? Yes, I am, Dr. Drew. How you doing? Art Ziegler. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Excellent. I was uh, I was listening about the myocarditis, and my father-in-law, who lives with us, is 94, and he had been in perfect health up through a couple of years ago, and I guess it was about a year and a half after he took his COVID shot. He started having ventricular tachycardia events. How long and after the vaccine? How long? About year a year and a half. half. Year and a half. About a year and a half. Yeah. He was the only yeah. one in the household who decided to get the vaccine because he had, he yeah. felt he, because of his age, he needed to. And I was thinking because of his age, he didn't need to. But <laughs> that was the difference of opinion. But uh, one of the things with the ventricular tachycardia, he'd been in perfect health until then. No heart issues, no nothing. There's no real blood pressure issues, just uh, uh, diabetes too. Um, that was the main thing with him. And now he's gotten to the point where he can't get up, can't move around because his blood pressure's going up and down like crazy. So, um, Okay, well, those are all, that relates. you know, I mean... May, well, yeah, may. So I mean, it could be a you know pot syndrome, but go ahead, Kelly. Well, what I was going to say is, unfortunately, at ninety four, you know, when somebody develops a cardiac issue, you know, it's unfortunately he's in an age group where those sorts of things do start to happen or can right. start to happen. Exactly. The ventricular tachycardia, exactly. in particular. Now, I will say, however, that labile blood pressures, this issue of blood pressures going up and down. That is something that we have seen, you know, a uh, an increase in without any question following these vaccines. It's quite profound mm -hmm. in a young person when you see it. Um, people look at it less with uh, less of a critical eye, I think, when it happens to somebody in their 90s. Um, so uh, that by itself is unusual. The ventricular tachycardia, unfortunately, you know, and, and changes in heart health can happen at, at uh, certainly in that ninth decade for certain. So there'd be no way to say with with you know certainty that this was secondary to the vaccine. That said, Dr. Right. McCullough just posted a Substack just today, I think, where his concern is that people are continuing to show cardiac injury you know, two years, two plus years following mm -hmm. vaccine, and that he has concerns about even sudden cardiac death two years later. So the fact that, you know, I guess what I'm saying is a long way of saying there's no way to say with your father in particular, because he's in that age group where heart issues can happen uh, anyway. But, uh, and I, we probably will never know if his was vaccine related. 
Right. I, I will I say one thing, Art. Uh, uh, one thing I will say, Art, is that the in terms of these labile blood pressures like that, these sort of autonomic instabilities in mm-hmm. elderly patient, the most common place that I see that is in the setting of even mild Parkinson's. So does he have Parkinson's at all? Right. No par- no Parkinson's at all. And, and mm-hmm. ha- he's on two medications, one for the VT. It's amarotadrone. And, and, the, the, yeah. Uh, yeah. and the other is metadrine to bring his blood pressure back up. Because when he wakes up in the right. morning, his blood pressure a lot of times is something like 91 over 58. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. he has... This happens. And he tries to, it happens. Yeah, he tries to sit up and he gets dizzy, he gets or he wants to pass out, very nauseated. So we, yeah. you know, we're just trying to help him get through it. I get it, uh, and uh, I want to say I know, as Art, you had another family member that had a, a episode. I want you to know that that person was at a leading edge of something we saw uh, are seeing, continue to see a lot of in the last few years from cannabis. A lot. The cannabis right. is so powerful that it's just causing these syndromes, and that person in your own sphere there had something that is now quite common to me, quite commonplace. Oh yeah, and. And since she's been on her medication and and off the other, then she's been doing very good. Yeah. Great. Congratulations. So thank you. Talk to you soon, my friend. Okay, you got it. Uh, We'll keep going here. Uh, This is John, Real John MK is the... uh, uh, Okay. And Ian, I'll be with you next. And John, you have to unmute yourself. Okay, I'm trying to get there, but you guys have been very good about raising your hands. There are quite a number of you are requesting now, so I'm trying to get through everybody. But I tell you what I am going to have to do is if the uh, the microphone glitches, like seems to be happening with John, I just have to move on to the next person So because uh, we are running out of time. Ian, you are up next. Uh, Ian Crossland. Hey, what's up, Ian? Hey, Drew. Uh, thanks for having me on. Thanks, Kelly. Okay. Caleb, thanks for hosting. This is mm-hmm. Ian Crossland from TimCast IRL. I co-host with Tim. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about the DNA plasmid. I think that's what it is. It's that this, from what I can tell, DNA got broken up and then has infected the process. I want to figure out how to concisely you, you talk must about have this missed, stuff. Ian, 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 you must have yeah. missed that we did about 20 minutes of, of it with a biotech expert uh, at the outset with of the Christy. show. Did you? Yeah. With Christy. Did you hear all that? Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, I did. Some of it was passing over. I was really, really listening. Um, I'm going to go on okay. these, this big YouTube show, and I want to talk about it concisely. Are there like documents that I can reference that you guys are aware of? They talk about the plasmid. They talk about what the plasmid contamination, the, the DNA. The plasmid. Yes. The, the, I think you need three things. You need three things. If I'm telling you, Christy has a great, several great threads. They're only about. 10 or 12 entries per thread and you can really bring yourself up to an expertise on how you know what what the the issues are in the plasmid dr um what's the doctor she always references yes, he, he has all the well, data well, on the well, what is it and, well and and gets go uh you know who we've had on the show a couple times you know he's a phd gets go was good he, yeah he you know he did the really has broken it down into lay terms i think the the bait and switch um, so he, you know, he, he's got that's the good part documents. of it as to what, what, why, you know, why there's concerns about the, the plasmid being used as the platform for developing the vaccine. And yet they didn't ask for approval for that platform. So people are worried about and, that. And, and, and Jessica the final Rose thing is, also has a good one. Jess Rose. Right, so and Jessica the Jessica final thing this. is that. Gosh, oh, sorry to interrupt you. I, this, this other doctor that has a lot of good stuff up here. Let me see. Uh, plasmid doctor. This gets go. I want to get these these full names as well. Yeah, that's well. You can go if if you go on to drdrew.com, You can yeah. you can you can actually see, get yeah. the spelling of his last name and see actually look at the hour long segment that we did with him. Um, he's actually based in Israel. Got it. That's gets go. It's G-O-E-T, yes. something like that. 
Yeah. It's not G O E T. It's it's G O E T. I can't tell you how. To, yeah, I'm not sure how to spell it. That's I'm not sure yeah. how to spell it. So you'd have to look on the website. I can't tell you okay. offhand. But the, the, the there was Christy, another. I think it's probably mentioned. Yeah. Go ahead, Christy. Sorry to interrupt, man. Yeah, Christy. What's her last name? I want to follow up on her work too. Um, Christy Grace and Kayla. Maybe you can throw up her um, Twitter handle. It's at something of Grace. I said it a few minutes ago. Working on it right now. I'll put it on screen. Uh, you can throw that up there for me. Okay. He won't see it, so I'll re read it after you put it up there. But there, but she also is very involved with another um, researcher who was one of the first to sort of raise a question about this. And one of the, the other issues is how the regions of the plasmid were identified. And for some reason, in all the applications and in all the material that's available about the plasmid, they leave out the most important piece of DNA, which is the so-called promoter region, which is the part that if it gets into your DNA, can change the regulation of the DNA, and that's how cancers happen. Okay. They left that, that out of the documentation. Yeah, they left it out of the documentation, but it was actually there were promoters within that they found. Correct. Is that what you're and that's how I understand it. Yes. And there are there are researchers out there making issue of that. Not me. I'm just taking their word for it. So I don't know. Again, this is all stuff I'm hearing that's that's coming my way. Yeah. So Christy. Right, and I actually, want to come back can, out to Wes uh, Christy sorry, you can, is, uh, you can at find Heart Christy. of Grace. Yeah, well it's it's uh it's x.com slash underscore heart of grace underscore so it's h-e-a-r-t-o-f-g-r-a-c-e -E, but there's an underscore at the beginning and the end it's christy laura grace gotcha. underscore heart thank of grace. you so much her underscore. account might be protected and, um, and locked right Ian, now i want to request say that again the what her account sometimes she locks her account i think it might be locked right now but you can request a follow and she'll probably mm. approve people there okay, okay. Th yeah, just follow Ian, her, so i want to Okay, yeah, Drew, and I, I want you. to come back out to West Virginia and see, and see you guys. Let's do it, man. I hit me up on Twitter. Uh, I message me. I message you, and then let's do something on Twitter, and then get you out here, dude. Okay, done. A done. I want to hear. I want right. to hear I more. All right, brother. Thanks, man. I really appreciate <laughs> okay. the time, guys. Looking right. forward to more callers. All right, anytime. Bye. Good to hear from you. Uh, let me quickly. Gosh, you guys have been so good and so patient. I'm I'm already feeling bad that we're not going to get to a lot of people. Um, so I'm trying to get to people that have been up here waiting a while. By the way, I like Kelly's point that if she doesn't know who somebody is, she's not going to yep. sign on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Absolutely. I don't argue with people who hide Be behind a crisis. shroud of, a, a shroud of anonymity. Uh, and, and nor do I argue with people who interrupt me incessantly because you're simply trying to pick a fight. You're not actually interested in a true, um, you know, robust but respectful debate. Uh, I'll debate with anybody on the facts, but I want to know who they are. I don't argue with uh, faceless, nameless people because it goes into exactly what I've said, which is who do you work for? How do I know that you don't, you're not a pharma shill? Um, you know, if we want to yeah. actually have integrity in our data and integrity in the discussion, then uh, man up and uh, put your face and your name and your credentials out there just like I do every single day uh, and expose and disclose who it is who's paying you. If anybody. But we should bring you at some point, bring the data up because I, because I do know the data he's referencing and that's why I kind of, I'm, I'm waiting on the cancer data to evolve fair before enough. I say anything yeah, about that. Yeah, fair enough. And I'll have that. And is, I agree yeah. with you, Drew. I think we should look at the data and say, why, you know, why is this data not comport with, with you know, with what I'm seeing or with my data yeah. Yeah. and look at it and say, yeah. you know, is there a reason you, you um, sent me an, a, uh, a study the other day, by the way, and said you had an issue with a particular um, paragraph on it. it was a study looking at whether or not there was ill effects to newborns uh, from pregnant, pregnant women yeah. who were, who were uh, yeah. injected with mRNA during their pregnancies. And I, the yeah. first thing I did before I ever even read that study was to look at the conflicts of interest. Two of the three authors work for the the Canadian counterpart of what we'd call the CDC. And the third investigator, Fell, is employed by Pfizer. Mm. Okay. So you tell me how much faith I am going to put in that study. Two out of the three work for the CDC, for the Canadian uh, Canada CDC, and the third works for Pfizer. I don't really want to hear what they have to say about, you know, that's the you know, you got the fox guarding the hen house. 
I'm I'm a little more um maybe it's naive, <laughs> but I'm a little more we'll at least look at the study. Uh anti corrupt. You're up uh just uh, unmute your mic and you're in. There you are. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Drew. I just wanted to say I put in the little purple pill at the bottom. This should be going live on Naomi Wolf's site shortly. I just got out of communication with her. There is a protest going on outside of Pfizer this Sunday between 1 and 3 p.m. We have also put together, I helped author the letter, the press release and such to Albert Borla. It's been sent to the Michigan legislature. We are awaiting votes to see what legislators will be signing it. We are asking them to halt the production of the COVID-19 vaccine and remdesivir upon further, you know, finding out about the adulteration and the things that we're discussing here and also the deadly hospital protocols that we know are a result of remdesivir. We um, may have a special guest speaker. We're not sure that we may not find out until last minute, but um, I just sent that stuff over to Naomi. She should be publishing it on her site. If not, there is information in the bubble but um, I am waiting to hear back from the Michigan legislature to find out who, if any of the legislatures, will be signing that letter to Albert Borla directly asking him and Pfizer to stop the production based on the ongoing revelations that we're finding about the vaccine. Thank you. Okay. There you Perfect. go. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, all right, we are just about. I think out Steve of... Kirsch is going to join us. Oh, what is Steve on doing? Twitter Spaces. What does Steve he need? He emailed us. Remember, he had a, asked a question this morning to you guys. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't think that we, we, there were some email exchanges about us not doing that. So thank you for putting me in a very awkward position. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, <laughs> so, but I will be Steve. happy. He likes to stir the pot a yes, little bit. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Indeed. He's on. Can you see him? I don't see him. Are you raising your hand, Steve? Or is a request to be a speaker? Yeah, you have to re request to be a speaker. Uh, There's a little lag, so he'll just hear that now. Okay, give me a second. I'm looking around for it him. Is. See if I can find him. Sorry, we're running out of time too. What's that, Caleb? As, ask him, uh, Susan. Ask him to uh, request, like, to raise his hand. I also, I, I do think it's kind of funny that the moment that you said Steve's name, then the real truther also shows up on the space at the exact same time. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, real truther. Well, we, got, we, got the, it's, we got to have the positive and the negative poles. We gotta, we gotta, <laughs> Get them both on at the same time. No, <laughs> yeah, no, that's no, a different I, day. <laughs> well, Steve's up. Okay, he's got it. He did it. Uh, Caleb, can you yes, see him? Yes, I got him. He's up. And thank him for the lovely time oh, the other night. And his heated time. toilet seat. Yeah, yeah. Steve put on a thing. Here we are. And Steve uh, right. very kindly put a put a uh, fundraiser together for your friend uh, Bobby Kennedy, it was Kelly, and it was I know. lovely, That's lovely, great. lovely. So, Steve, what's going on? Uh, well, I uh, just got off the phone with Roger Seaholt, and I asked right. Roger. I uh, I basically uh, have have posted this uh, survey results that show that the uh, COVID vaccines are a complete disaster. And I said, look, anybody can replicate the survey in 24 hours, and it will cost Roger about five minutes of his time to replicate the survey. Literally, less he could do it for less than five minutes. All he has to do, I'll give him a custom URL, he can just post that, and he and I can watch the data come in and make sure the data wasn't tampered with. So neither of us could touch the data, and he hung up on me. So, and, and Caleb, you have concerns about online uh, online data collection. Let me let me express what what the issue is, the concerns are with that kind of thing. Caleb, uh, y yes, I uh, yeah, so I I I love Steve. I love Steve a lot. I just I know with the internet, it's called. I, I mean, a lot of people on the internet call it the Bodie McBoat face phenomenon, where if you have a poll on the internet, and especially if you it, it's they're very easily manipulated. I can go online and I can buy 10,000 votes in a Twitter poll for like $150. And so it's really hard. I don't usually, I don't usually look at Twitter polls as good, uh, as a good way of doing a study, but now that's not to say that your data is bad, yeah, it's, Steve. It's I, I would never. Twitter poll. Yeah. It's, I, it's not a Twitter poll. So, so can, can we, do you, you don't even know what the poll is. Right. Right. That's, that's why it's like, I, uh, <laughs> to be honest, I said that in a, in a, a little private conversation with Drew, uh, it wasn't about anything that you're doing specifically. I had just said it in general, that it's hard for me. He's educating me. At, yeah. Educating I didn't look at your, about 
how I this don't know works. anything about your details. So this isn't anything about Steve Kirsch specifically, Steve. I, I, right. I, I follow you very closely, right. so I like your stuff. I'm just saying that in general, it's really difficult to use polls on, on any space, not even just Twitter, but from anywhere on that's online based because they're very easily manipulated. And plus, it's also if, if you send a poll out to your followers and you may have 200 or I don't know, 500,000 or a million followers, it's going to be very skewed because the people that follow you are already somewhat skewed as it is. Now, that's, that's not saying that you're you're doing it badly. I'm just saying in general with online polls, Correct. that's how you end up with, you know, they do a public poll in a city and they're like, what are we going to name the city's official boat? And then Bodie McBoatface wins because it goes viral on the internet amongst a bunch <laughs> of trolls. So okay. it's that's so, that's my so, only so point. I, I, I think I think before you, you you comment on the poll, you should read the poll, you should look at the data, and you should look at the questions, and you should look at the explanation for why there's no bias. Are you willing to do so that? We, okay. Well, so yeah, what, Steve, why don't, you go, go ahead, why don't you go ahead and at least give people a. a Feel for you know what what is the poll what what yeah. just, you the, know the, give people an poll, idea the, of what it the, is the, the poll w- w- was was sent out uh, to people who follow me on Substack who would read me on Substack and it asked if you know of anyone who died since January one of twenty twenty one and then it asked for details about the death when what was the date of the death when was the date of last vaccination how many vaccinations did the person have things like that these are are all third-party verifiable uh, pieces of information so in some cases. In some cases, that, that information is not um, maybe private, but the person who has it knows it, and we can verify that and see if we can verify that. And so the point is that there is no incentive for people to lie. There is no possible way people can collude on the answer to manipulate the results to get it in the form that you want because nobody knows how anybody else voted. And yet the, the signal is clear. There is no possible way that you could get, I don't care if my, my, the, the people are biased, it is impossible to get these results because they're consistent. So either people are lying uh, consistently or have a, the exact same bias for everybody, or the poll is reflecting reality. And many people wrote in to say that they couldn't fill out the poll because they didn't have the accurate information. They didn't know when the person was last vaccinated or they didn't know which vaccine was the last vaccine the person had. This is why I only got 500 responses while I normally get 12,000 because people follow the instructions, which is only report what you know and give me a link so I can have it verified that the name of the person matches, they died and so forth. So People would have to actually kill people in the past in order to game this survey. And to my knowledge, people can't time travel into the past, kill someone right after they got a vaccine, and then report it, Um, and, and, and also that they would have to know that person too. So time travel is not possible. It, is, it would be very hard to game the survey because most people only knew at most one person who died and they knew the vaccination details of that person. And so they could only respond with one person. And it's not like they're killing people to, to, because they knew Steve Kirsch was going to run a poll two years later. No, I, I understand that, Steve. And, and Steve, I, I love you. I, this isn't trying to say that any of your data is inaccurate. I haven't dug that deep into it. I just know from my experience of, of being on the internet for a, a while, you know, since I was a, a little kid, that anything that's done on the internet, you have to assume people are lying. And if you don't actually have like full on, you know, if they're not uploading death certificates and things, there are a lot of different influences on both sides. Like there's influences from the anti-vax movement and the I, pro-vax I movement it, that want to mess with it. They can't lie consistently. If you have a bunch of, let's say you have 10,000 answers Mm -hmm. and you go and you look at (coughs) samples of 100 or less and you pick um, thousands of random samples of 100 or less and you get the same numbers. Right. So here's here's how, here's how. It doesn't work that way. They have to be reflecting reality in order to get that kind of consistency. But they're, the thing is, there are it, it, organized groups that try to do this. So, like, for example, if, if let's say someone over on 4chan 
post something there and they said, yes. oh, let's go mess with this guy. I, 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 I They'll make that. stuff but, up. But you see, they, they, they don't know what I was looking for. And I have proof of that because I asked people. I did. I went on Twitter for all these guys to expose me. I said, do you know how I can use this to prove it? And nobody was able to do that. Nobody could figure out what I was asking for. So they can't game the survey if they don't know what I'm looking for and how it will be analyzed. Right. And so the way the way I would say, because I do know the survey and at your behest, I did review um, quite a few of the survey submissions. Um, and what I would say is, oh, this, no, 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 I'm no. Very hey, hey, Kelly, Kelly, uh, that was an earlier survey. So on this survey, I don't ask for any opinions. I ask for opinions, but it's just uh, it's discarded. I don't even use the opinions. So anything that oh. they said, any justification, any opinion is not in the current in the 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 survey that I, I most recently did. Okay. What I was going to say about these surveys in general, Steve, because I do think you've taken some pains to make sure that it doesn't get corrupted the way that Caleb is clearly pointing out that some of these can and many of them are, is that I'm very clear that this is not a quote scientific study. We aren't looking at hard data. What you did, however, I think is important because this falls squarely under what I would call when there's smoke, there's fire. We, this is, there, there is evidence and it's evidence that's being provided by the average lay person. People are seeing this and you cannot continually ask people to not believe their lion eyes and not believe what they are seeing happening around them. Yes. A lot of people know someone who has been harmed by these vaccines. Are they a doctor? Are they, do they have the data? Has it been published at UCSF? Has it shown up at the CDC? No. The reality is, if you think that observation and what people are seeing, what millions of people are seeing, doesn't hold sway, you're wrong, or doesn't have legitimacy, you're wrong. And so I think what you are looking at is good people poke holes at it because it is not, and I freely admit, a scientific study. It won't get published somewhere, Steve, but it's real. And it is. this falls under the, where there's smoke, I promise you, there is fire. Yes, and I, I want to say really quickly, I would, I would never challenge Steve to a debate because Steve does this 24-7, 365 right now. So I'm not challenging the data and everything you just said, Kelly, is true. Where there's smoke, there's fire. My worry is that if we start basing our arguments on these types of polls, then th what I just said, those are the arguments that the other side are going to use to try and dismantle I totally it. agree. When the data could, he, Steve, you could totally be 100% right. I just worry they're going to say those things about internet polls. So it's, the, not, it's not against it, you. All right. It, it, yeah. It, you know, look, this is, this is not about me. It's not about my poll. The point is that no public health authority will go through their records and confirm the results. Nobody is going to look at the records. Right. Nobody right. even has the records so they can look at it because they keep the databases separate. So they, they basically, no public, any public health authority could, could um, replicate this in their own database in a day. All right, guys, we got to leave it here. We've, we've run yeah. over by quite a bit. Steve, um, uh, I, will, I will talk to you very soon. I appreciate you being here. Okay, thank you. You bet. And Kelly, we appreciate you as well. You'll be back tomorrow. Uh, I will. We'll be talking about non-COVID, which is great. I, I have a feeling we're going to get some overlap tomorrow, <laughs> whether we like it or not, because uh, there are many, many people I did not It'll get to It'll just be data. Yeah, did but not we have get... to promote something too. I want anybody in the New York area who likes the show and wants to see us live in New York at a comedy festival. We're going to do an Ask Dr. Drew with uh, Jimmy Fela and Cat Temp. Everybody loves them. They've been guests on the show. Um, it won't be live streaming, but um, we'd love to see your faces. That is do we have the video, Caleb? There's a video. Uh, it'll play at the end of the show. Yeah, I have a promo that'll play. Okay. Uh, okay. Excellent. And uh, yeah, the tickets are available at drdrew.com slash NY comedy. That'll be fun. We'll, we'll, and it's not expensive. It's me and Kat and Jimmy Fallon. And uh, so we're going to be shitting on things that we can do in a more raunchy way, you know, in, in a comedy festival. So fair enough. Uh, so Kelly, I will, we'll do a little carryover from this topic. No doubt. Cause again, there's like 30 people that want to come up and ask questions, <laughs> okay. but we really want to take okay. any medical psychiatric ER, whatever questions you might have that tomorrow will be the day for that and uh there's the uh 
little flyer for uh, the Chelsea Music Hall on 8.30 November on 6th. All right, uh, Kelly. It's a again. Monday. You and, don't have anything else going tomorrow, on. Come on down. <laughs> tomorrow we're going to be at our usual time, three in the afternoon. Time. Correct. Oh, we all yep. agree. All right. Yep. We'll see everybody yes. tomorrow at three o'clock Pacific Thanks. time. Ask Dr. Drew is produced by Caleb Nation and Susan Pinsky. As a reminder, the discussions here are not a substitute for medical care, diagnosis, or treatment. This show is intended for educational and informational purposes only. I am a licensed physician, but I am not a replacement for your personal doctor and I am not practicing medicine here. Always remember that our understanding of medicine and science is constantly evolving. Though my opinion is based on the information that is available to me today, some of the contents of this show could be outdated in the future. Be sure to check with trusted resources in case any of the information has been updated since this was published. If you or someone you know is in immediate danger, don't call me, call 911. If you're feeling hopeless or suicidal, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 800-273-8255. You can find more of my recommended organizations and helpful resources at drdrew.com slash help. Gilbert Gottfried got canceled for tweeting about the Japanese tsunami. I yep. promise you there was no one suffering from the horrors of a tsunami that was checking American Twitter. Yeah. When you're getting your instructions to go home, what are they emphasizing? Oh, do not attempt to penetrate stoma. And it happens often enough that they need to underline it, bold it. Cap tells you everything I think that you need to know about men. Yeah. Because there was enough people being like, okay, I just went through this traumatic experience where my intestines out and then my partner put his dick in it. The one thing you must be is funny. You better be funny. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, Drew and Booth Boys, it's for you guys too. I had a hydrocelectomy. Do you know what a hydrocel is? No. Is it an it, animal? No, it's a uh, big cyst in your testicle. Should oh. you have testicles? Yeah, I know. Uh, over a cup and a half of fluid drained from my right ball. Maybe next time we do one of those medical examinations thing, we had to find somebody <laughs> with a hydrocel. I got a nice big one. Uh, I went from a normal size. Uh, I went from a normal size to a lemon sized overnight. Uh, it was explained to me that hydrocele's occurred due to traumatic injury. Mm, yeah, infection. Neither of those happened to me. Yeah, they just sometimes happen. Any insight why this occurred rapidly and any way to mitigate the chance of a recurrence? Ooh. I assume, oh, they just drained it. The mitigate the recurrence, they will remove them surgically. Uh, I'm not sure I would do that. And as you see, if you recur, it just, you go, you know, you just take the other drain. That's all. I know that sounds gruesome. 